of one half of the Five Lakers podcast, host of the Melanin Warriors podcast, bringing part two of the Melanin Warrior we discussed last week to St. Loverture. And before we get into this, I just want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. You guys, uh, hopefully you enjoy your day. I know you do your thing for your families every day. So hats off to you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into the father of Haiti. Toussaint Louverture joins the French. You know what I mean? He left the Spanish to join the French. Historians have debated on the reason as why he turned away from the Spanish. Some say it was due to the Emancipation Proclamation in May 1794, while others say he was really indifferent to the plight of the men and the people and only wanted to secure safety for himself from the Spanish. During his first week of joining the French, he eradicated all the Spanish supporters from the Cordon de la Hoste. Hopefully I said that right. It's spelled C-O-R-D-O-N-D-E-L apostrophe O-U-E-S-T. So if I didn't pronounce that right, my French majors or whatever out there, put something in the comments. Let me know how to properly say it. All right, further fighting against his former comrades in the slave rebellion. As the commander, he also faced British troops who landed on St. Domingue. And if y'all remember from part one, St. Domingue is modern day Haiti. They landed in September of, this, of that year. They were hoping to take advantage of the ongoing instability to capture this wealthy, this wealthy island because, you know, the slave trade and everything. It, it was really, you know, the economy was booming over there. So with about 4,000 men, including his brother and nephew, Louverture was able to put an end to the Spanish threat to the French in Haiti. The Treaty of Basel in 1795 marked the formal end to the hostilities between the Spanish and the French. But the British still remained a threat, and he set his eyes on them. However, he was unable to expel them from St. Mark, where they pretty much took over and held the ground there. So instead, he contained them using his famous guerrilla tactics. Through 1795 and 1796, Louverture was concerned with two things mainly. The two things were he wanted to first establish agriculture. He gave plenty of speeches and put out policies to get the economy rolling again. So he did this by the diplomatic means, and he also used force to get the field hands to return to the plantation as emancipated paid workers instead of just regular old slaves. His, his second concern was his potential rivals in the French colony, most notably Jean-Louis Vallit. They constantly competed for command, and Jean-Louis was somewhat racist towards the melanin soldiers uh, like Toussaint, you know what I'm saying? He didn't like Toussaint or anybody of his, his skin complexion. So he tricked the people into believing the French were going to go back on their word and restart slavery. So on March 20th, he was able to capture the French governor and he appointed his self-governor. Louverture arrived soon after to rescue the captured governor and he drove off Jean-Louis uh, out of the town. He began by opening warehouses to the public, pretty much showing them all the rumors, you know what I'm saying, it was a lie. There were no chains in the storehouse and there was no sign or anything like that that the French intended to return the men and the people of Haiti back into slavery. So Louverture was then promoted to commander of the West Province after defeating his rival thoroughly. Months after he was promoted again to St. Domingue's top ranking officer. A few years passed and Louverture continued to have issues with the British he and another general continued to harass the British because their position became weak. So, you know, they just kept hitting them, kept hitting them, kept hitting them. So their withdrawal was almost assured until the latest French commissioner came in and signed a treaty with the British general, Thomas Maitland. After the fighting between Louverture and this uh, new French commissioner reached a breaking point and an uprising began and the commissioner could not handle the situation. And Louverture said, you know what, I'm not helping you. So, you know what I'm saying? He, the, the commissioner tried to get aid from Louverture and he said, no, I'm not coming. I'm not coming to your aid. After being on the verge of being arrested, um, the commissioner, he just left France and left Louverture's rival, Rigardi, in charge. So he declined to work with him. So he, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't really messing with this dude like that because he pretty much, you know, he, he, he took his legs from under him any chance he got, you know what I'm saying? Made himself look good while bringing Louverture down. So he declined to work with him and soon found himself making negotiations with yet another one of French's enemies. And guess who, y'all? The United States. The father of Haiti's story is so extensive, so interesting, so pivotal to our melanin history. I had to do a part three, guys. So y'all stay tuned next week, part three coming. Um, the father of Haiti, Toussaint Louverture, 
and how he was able to finally beat back the renowned General Napoleon. So like always, this is your boy, Casey Fowler, one half of the Fowler's podcast, host of the Melanin Warriors podcast. And remember, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. And I'm-